So I think it's important that American scholars support the preservation of the intellectual communities that existed inside of Afghanistan and that flourished over this past 20 years. Uh, Afghanistan changed so much so quickly. It made such incredible progress in such a short period of time. I think it's actually unprecedented. If you look at all of the countries in the region, the higher education, the academic community in Afghanistan almost leaped frogged over the neighboring countries in such a short period of time. And so I think it's a tragedy if we think about the loss of that community, the loss of that intellectual power. It would be a real tragedy, not just for Afghanistan, not just for these individuals, but a tragedy for the world. And so, but we know that as academics, we can't do our work alone. We have to work together. We have to work in communities. So preserving them, trying to keep them together, either physically, as we're trying to do at the University of Pittsburgh, or virtually in other kinds of networks, I think would be very, very important um, for the future. So we actually began working to bring Afghan scholars to Pittsburgh uh, a couple of months before the fall of the Republic because there was the targeted assassination campaign against many prominent scholars who I had been working with for many years. I was very worried about their safety. So I began reaching out to different organizations like Scholar Rescue Fund, to see if they'd be interested. Um, and at that time, Afghanistan hadn't yet collapsed and they were providing support to scholars inside of Afghanistan. So we really tried hard to put this issue on the radar so that there was awareness of it even before the government collapsed. And when the government collapsed, we mobilized very quickly to find resources to support resettlement of scholars. So now we have six scholars in Pittsburgh. I think we have six more coming and uh, so it's important for us to really keep them together as a community so that they can continue to grow and thrive. Uh, I think the first one was um, first financial, finding resources, and we've been very fortunate to find foundations, individual donors, university partners who are very interested in working with us. Uh, the second one is visas. The U.S. immigration system is not tailored, and we actually still have some scholars who are waiting to receive their visas. And it's very, very difficult uh, because these Afghans are in a very precarious situation. Uh, so it's imperative that the U.S. promise so much to Afghans in terms of resettlement. I think it's important that the U.S. deliver on those promises and expedite the visa processes for Afghans, especially these scholars who sacrificed so much and promoted the vision and the values that the United States had. I think the third issue is bureaucratically inside my university. Uh, although my university acted quickly in its view, the universities are not well equipped to do crisis response. So hiring of academics takes time. Uh, bringing people in takes time and universities normally operate in a very slow process. So I pushed lots of buttons <laughs> to try to make this happen very quickly. I think they were also not prepared for the number of people I was willing to bring. Of course, they agreed to it at first, uh, but when you see things on paper and then see things on practice, it's a very different thing. So the number of people that we have brought, I think has, um, was a challenge in terms of university support and so forth. There are so many people who support Afghanistan um, who have never been there and have no reason to support the country. They just saw what had happened. They saw the collapse of the country and they cared. Private donors reached out and wanted to support people. It was the most amazing thing, the, the generosity that we received um, from individuals. Uh, other, uh, we have a partnership with the Open Society University Network who saw what we did and reached out to partner with us so they could send us more scholars through the platform that we created. They said that we had acted quickly, we had proof of concept, they hadn't seen anyone else do what we had done and were willing to support us to send more people, which was very exciting for us. I've had so many people, lawyers, who can help with immigration. I have a small army of immigration lawyers, people who I've never met in real life, who heard about what I was trying to do and what we were trying to do at Pitt. And when I had 
individual Afghans get stuck in immigration. They volunteered their time. I have congressional staffers who text me frequently asking, how can I help? I see what you're doing. So it's really been amazing to see the outpouring of support and people who really care. Uh, but bureaucracies can be very tough to break through. Mm -hmm.